morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension tension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about on the news or in the press, we are your go-to resource for good health information, nutritional supplementation information, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844 Two three six sixty ten. If you have questions about the longevity products, or our Truth Skin Health products, or our Bone Broth protein, protein, any of the products you see at BrightSideHealth.com, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we especially love hearing those. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number today on the Bright Side and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please head to BrightSideBend.com or PharmacistBend.com or Critical Health News. Com. You can purchase products right off the website, and you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. Love to have you on the team. If you're entrepreneurially minded, if you're a business person, if you like health, if you want to change lives, if you've gotten benefits from the longevity products and you want to share those benefits with other folks, love to have you on the Brightside team. Call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can sign up right off criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. I can help you grow your business, and uh, Longevity can help you grow your business as well. The products really sell themselves. Call 866-735-2470, and they can tell you all about it. Okay, so we are talking connective tissue. Still talking connective tissue for good reason. A third of the body is made up of the stuff. And I'd venture to say there is no chronic degenerative disease that we can deal with that doesn't have a connective tissue component. We've been talking about the circulatory system and the heart and its relationship to connective tissue, the cardiovascular system. Cardiovac cardiovascular, that is the heart and the blood vessels. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in this country and around the world. It affects one out of four Americans and costs hundreds of billions of dollars a year. And in my opinion, the missing link in our approach to dealing with the problem is the connective tissue. This is called the unified theory of cardiovascular disease. Linus Pauling first came up with this, the idea that all cardiovascular disease involves the connective tissue. So there's various forms of cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis and congestive heart failure and blood vessel disease, aneurysm, strokes, etc. But they all have the connective tissue in common. Linus Pauling called it the unified theory. And this is why vitamin C is so important for the heart and for the blood vessels because you can't make connective tissue without vitamin C. In chemistry, we say vitamin C is the rate limiting step or the action of vitamin C is the rate limiting step on the production of connective tissue. No vitamin C, no connective tissue. Now, certainly most of us get some vitamin C, but if you don't have enough, you're not going to make enough connective tissue. You're not going to be able to repair the connective tissue as effectively, and that's why vitamin C is so important for the heart. The circulatory system, the blood vessels, the veins, the arteries, the lymph, as well as the fluids that flow through the circulatory system and the lymph, the blood and the lymphatic fluid themselves are part of the connective tissue system. 
The heart, like all organs, is built on a structure or a framework or a scaffolding of connective tissue. The connective tissue covers the heart. It protects the heart. It feeds the heart. It nourishes the heart, as it does with every other part of the body, as it does with every cell in the body. Every cell in the body is protected, nourished, detoxified, oxygenated via the connective tissue. That includes the heart. That includes the cardiocytes, the heart cells. When was the last time a cardiologist approached the heart and, and cardiovascular health as a connective tissue disease or a connective tissue problem? Never. You never hear this. They're always obsessed with cholesterol, always obsessed with rerouting things, with bypasses, with drugs, with ablations. There's a mechanical, well, you can build connective tissue in various ways. You can build it with supplements, certainly vitamin C we've talked about. Essential fats are important for building connective tissue. Bone broth protein is important for building connective tissue. If you have a history of cardiovascular disease, get on the bone broth protein. Use bone broth, cartilage, glucosamine, the glucogel caps. These are all very important nutrients for helping build connective tissue. Sulfur is also important. MSM sulfur or sulfur that's found in cartilage or sulfur that's found in in bone broth protein or sulfur that's found in organ meats and dairy and, and animal products or sulfur that's found in beans. Sulfur is a very, very important player in the, in the hardening of connective tissue. It gives connective tissue a certain firmness, specifically collagen. And there's also mechanical ways that you can build connective tissue. Collagen, which is like a synonym for connective tissue. It's, there are other components of connective tissue, hyaluronic acid, elastin, polysaccharides, uh, other substances that are called proteoglycans, that is sugar protein complexes. But basically, you can assume you, we can use collagen as a synonym for connective tissue, at least for our purposes here when we're talking about the heart. Collagen is this amazing, amazing substance. There's nothing in all of biology, there's nothing in the whole universe that is like collagen. Collagen is, generates an electrical charge via manipulation. It generates an electrical charge when, when there's heat applied to it. There, it generates an electrical charge when there's a, a twisting or pressure that's applied to it. It generates an electrical charge just sitting there. It conducts an electrical charge. It, you can actually amp up the electrical energy of collagen through pressure, through movement. We can actually energize our collagen. We can energize our connective tissue with movement. And this is one of the main ways that the body is supposed to charge itself. This is why they say sitting is the new smoking. One of the reasons why they say sitting is the new smoking. Because when we sit, we lose this, this charge. We are, we're not as electrically charged when we're sedentary. The connective tissue charges itself. The connective tissue conducts more electrical energy to the cells and to the tissues. The connective tissue conducts more electrical energy for healing and repairing itself when it is moved. Collagen and the connective tissue absorb energy through movement and then they direct that energy into flow. And in this way, connective tissue is not just about stability. Although yes, it plays a major role in stability in holding our bodies upright, in holding all our parts and our components together into one homogenous whole, but the connective tissue is also about movement. It's also about flow. And this is one of the reasons why fibrosis is such a problem. When the connective tissue is damaged, when we're not moving the connective tissue, the body will start to secrete fibers to repair that connective tissue and that impairs or impedes the flow of energy through the connective tissue. The heart and the blood and the connective tissue are all examples of movement and flow. The heart and the blood in particular are obviously, in fact, they're the quintessential examples in the body of movement and flow. And all of this flow, all of this movement depends on water, which is the largest component in the blood. and. It's the largest component of the, heart, of the heart. It's the largest component of everything. Our bodies are 60 to 70% water. And there's a very, very fascinating interaction between the body's watery component, this, the two thirds of the body that are made up of water, and the components of the connective tissue. The amino acids and the proteins in the connective tissue interact with the water in the blood and the water in the organs and structures of the body in this very fascinating way. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. We are back on the bright 
Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business or our Truth Skin Health products, which, by the way, you can find at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Questions about ingredients or a success story you'd like to share. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls in the bottom of the hour. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products or join the Brightside Ben team, please call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well. And if you want to check out our bone broth protein or our Pure Hemp Technologies CBD oil, you can go to uh, brightsidehealth.com brightsidehealth.com and if you're interested in checking out our truth skin health products including our retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol as well as vitamin C no preservatives, no fragrance, no oil no wax, no filler, no water no silicon, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth skin health products because you shouldn't have to pay for ingredients your skin is not using or you're not using and you shouldn't have to pay for ingredients your skin doesn't want especially preservatives I never understood that. How is it okay to rub a toxic, literally cytotoxic, cell toxic chemical on your skin once, twice, three times a day? How did that ever become okay? All right. So uh, there's a very fascinating interaction that takes place between the liquidy part of the body and the connective tissue, specifically between the water and the connective tissue. As the blood is flowing through the blood vessels, the liquidy portion of the blood, the water is interacting with the connective tissue wherever there's water in the body. And the body is, of course, two-thirds water or more in some places. Wherever there is an interaction between water and connective tissue, something very interesting happens. The connective tissue has an ability to actually change the shape of the water. See, we have this idea that water is just water, but that is not the case. There's all kinds of forms of water. You can actually structure water, and it turns out that collagen and the proteins in the connective tissue can structure water. They can change the shape of water. They can organize water. They can turn water from a whole mass of chaotic H2O molecules into this coherent crystal. Yes, they can crystallize water. Water can be what's called a liquid crystal, and in fact, much of the water in the body is structured in this way. And it is the collagen and the, uh, and the other proteins that are found in connective tissue, things like glucosamine and elastin. All of these substances, as they interact with water, will actually structure it and electrically activate it. They will turn the water into this organized liquid crystal system that could uh, absorb energy and turn it into information. In this way, our water, the water in our body, becomes an information storage system, and we're two-thirds water. It's actually the interaction between the structured water and the collagen that creates this information system. That's what, what's meant, what we mean when we say the connective tissue is like a little computer chip. It's the interaction between the fluid and the connective tissue that creates this, this information storage device that is this connective tissue slash water. Dr. Gerald Pollack, who's a professor, at the, a professor of bioengineering at the University of Washington, he calls this the fourth state of water. Water has typically three states, liquid, uh, gas as steam, and solid as ice. Dr. Pollock says structured water is the fourth state of water. You can actually measure it with a voltage meter. You can actually stick a voltage meter in your structured water, and you will get a voltage. Structured water promotes healing. This is one of the reasons why uh, substances like glucosamine and collagen and gelatin, by the way, don't underestimate the power of gelatin. And something called chitosan. Chitin is a, a, a type of collagen, not really, but it's an insect version of collagen, if you will. It's found in shellfish also. Chitin can be manipulated to form something called chitosan, which is available as a supplement. And all of these substances promote wound healing. Chitosan gels have been used to promote wound healing from burns and from post surgical trauma. Same with collagen gels. Anytime you create a gel, you're going to structure water. That's what a gel is. It's structured water. If you've ever, it, jello, if you've ever made jello, you have structured water. 
What turns your uh, jello from just a liquidy, soupy material into a solid gel is structuring. And this structuring imparts an electrical charge, and this electrical charge promotes healing. You can actually promote healing with jello. Anytime you have structured water, you're going to get an improvement of healing. And this is one of the ways the body heals itself is by structuring the liquid, by structuring, structuring the water. And we can take advantage of the same process by topically applying collagen to our skin, topically applying gelatin to our wounded skin. Topical, topically applied gelatin to wounds will accelerate the healing of wounds. Likewise, topically applied chitosan, topically applied um, uh, collagen of any kind, topically applied glucosamine for that matter, because all of these substances will create a gel. Topically applied hyaluronic acid. I love hyaluronic acid, but you got to have enough of it in order to affect healing. You can actually do some tremendous things with hyaluronic acid gel if you have enough hyaluronic acid. Not the kind that you get in your department store products, but you can make your own hyaluronic acid gel just by getting some hyaluronic acid powder and water. So structured water is a type of water that promotes healing. Structured water is a type of water that promotes electrical energy, promotes electrical flow. And structured water is always found at the interface between gel material, whether that gel material is collagen or hyaluronic acid or gelatin or, or chitosan, right at the interface between, between the gel and the water, you've got a structuring which you can observe visually. That's what a gel is. A gel is a type of structured water, or at least right at the interface between the gelling agent and the water. Structured water also has a flowing nature because blood is mostly water. This is why a glucosamine is actually a blood thinner. That's what makes one of the reasons why glucosamine is so important for the heart. It actually will thin the blood. How does it thin the blood? Well, it structures the water. It structured water flows. That's why glucosamine is inside of blood vessels. That's one of the things it does inside blood vessels. That's one of the things the collagen does inside the blood vessels. It promotes the flow of fluid. It promotes the flow of blood. And that means you could use your glucogel caps for heart health. If you have a history of thromboses, you have, you, uh, have a history of embolisms, with blood clots, if you're on a blood thinner, you may be able to reduce the dose of your deadly toxic blood thinner with glucosamine. Tell that to your doctor. If you are on a blood thinning type of drug like, like Coumadin or, or, glucose, or uh, uh, Pradaxa, tell your doctor that you want to experiment. You would like to try to use glucosamine to help lower the dose of your blood thinning drug. Or for that matter, hyaluronic acid. Or for that matter, chitosan. Or for that matter, cartilage and bone broth protein. These are all nutritional ways that you can naturally thin the blood. It's not just the blood, by the way, that has a flowing nature. The whole body has a flowing nature. All, we're two-thirds water, 60% water, 70% water, and all of this flows. The body has to flow. And understanding the flowing nature of the body is critical to understanding health. As we age, we become harder. We become fibrotic. This is how we age. This is the, almost the quintessential essence of the aging process is hardening, fibrosis. Flow means health, fibrosis means aging and disease. My right, pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a commercial break and come back with you and your phone calls right after this. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have a couple lines open for you. Hang on, we'll get to you in just a moment. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Connective Tissue Building Truth Retinol 5% Gel and Truth Serum and Truth Balm and Omega-6 Healing Cream, head to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I blog on the, uh, on skincare subjects uh, at truthtreatments.com as well, so you should check it periodically. Uh, we update it somewhat, somewhat regularly. And also, uh, speaking of posts and blog posts, you should head to uh, my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben, if you want to check out some uh, uh, my skin health, skin health, and other, not just skin health, but other health issues, or uh, I blog about other health issues as well on my Facebook page, and of course at criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com and brightsideben.com and Ben Fuchs Art. 
archives.com as well. Okay, let's see here. From the journal Seminars in Neurology, Neuropathies Associated with Connective Tissue Disease. I get letters every day and we get calls all the time on this program about neuropathies. That is nerve pain, the itching or the burning or the, uh, uh, the cramping the pins and needles sensation that occurs in the extremities, particularly in the legs and the feet and the toes. These are called neuropathies. They're associated with diabetes, they're associated with degeneration, but really you don't want to think about the diseases. You want to think about just general body decay, just a breakdown in the body, and it turns out that connective tissue plays a major role. From the journal Seminars in Neurology, neuropathies are a common neurologic manifestation of connective tissue disease. Yes. When your connective tissue breaks down, you will start to experience nerve pain, and nobody's going to think about working with the connective tissue. From the University of Chicago Medical Center, connective tissue disease increases risk for cardiovascular problems. Hello. This is what we've been talking about. Cardiovascular problems are a version of connective tissue disease. This is a, a study based on medical records of a quarter million adult patients. They found that connective tissue patients with connective tissue disease such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis were twice, oh, this is African American patients actually, African American patients were twice as likely as white patients to suffer from, uh, who had lupus and rheumatoid were twice as likely to suffer from atherosclerosis. These findings raise new questions about the links between inflammation, connective tissue disease, and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, said study author Dr. Francis Allengat. Dr. Francis Allengat would love the bright side. Hopefully, Dr. Francis is listening to the bright side right now. Doubt it, but Dr. Francis should be listening to the bright side. Anyway, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Jan in Santa Cruz. Good morning, Jan. Hello. Hey, Jan. What's going on? Hi. Hey. Well, I've had a lot of uh, stomach problems. And, okay. Uh, actually, and I you... called you a few months ago and uh, did a lot of the things that you suggested. Okay. And it would clear up and then it would come back again. That's awesome. That's great, Jan. When, when things clear up and come back, that's very, very important information. Okay. If things are always the same, there's no information there. But when things clear up and come back and there's changes, that's data. And that okay. should be that can be taken advantage of here. So first of all, well, you what say. What finally happened, though? Let me tell you what finally happened. I ended up in emergency because okay. I had uh, diarrhea and bleeding. And they gave you an antibiotic and prednisone. What, what did they give you? Uh, they gave me. Um, I have uh, colitis. What I okay, have. so they gave you an antibiotic, of course. I'm sure, right? Yes. Yes. Brilliant. Anyhow, Brilliant. It was two very strong antibiotics, which I hated taking, but I didn't know what. And that made you all better, and now you're wonderful and healthy and perfectly fine, right? Because you went terrific. to the doctor. Yes. Right. Feel terrific, because doctors fixed you right up, didn't they? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Good but deal. The, thing that the question I have to you now: They want me to to take a colonoscopy. Okay. Well, they're they're, they're geniuses. They know everything, and you should do whatever they tell you. That's what I say. No. 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 I don't. no? What? <laughs> no, 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 they're doctors. They went to medical school. They're doctors. Don't worry. They're doctors. They're doctors. They're doctors. They're... What? I don't understand, Jan. Are you skeptical? Are you skeptical of the doctors? A little bit. A little bit. Like I say, I've been with a doctor in five but years. But they're doctors. I'm seven years old. So. Oh, you're 77. Okay, so yeah. I can't fool you because you've yeah. been around the block a couple of times. All right. So Here's I, the deal. I know what your opinion is about whether or not it's necessary for me to have a colonoscopy. Well, I, I'm not going to tell you what's necessary and what's not. We're just going to talk about okay. your colon, okay? So okay. first of all, you got a colon problem, right? Yeah. The colon only does one thing. It processes food, correct? Sure. All right. So you're not lifting weights with your colon. You're not, uh, you're not thinking with your colon. You're not, you know, maybe a little bit, actually. You know, you're not beating your blood with your colon. Basically, your colon does food. So if you got a colon problem, you got a food problem. You right. follow me? Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, because you're 77, it may, it may be a little bit more than a food problem because you may have polyps or you may have a leaky gut. You probably do have some of these things. So, but basically, the first thing you want to do is you want to start off with food. All right? And that means for everybody who's got a colon issue, and there's nearly 100 million Americans who do. So chances are pretty good that folks listening to this program do. So you got to look to foods, and you always start off with a fast. If you can't do a fast, do a Swero V2 
V cleanse, but a fast is probably better. Either a fast or a swear OV cleanse where you do, ha and I'm not just talking to Jan, I'm talking to anybody out there who's dealing with a colon problem or really any health problem because all disease begins in the colon. You do a swear OV cleanse or a fast. A swear OV cleanse is when you use the swear OV from longevity. Uh, it's made with fermented whey. It's one of Jordan Rubin's best products, in my opinion. And uh, you do half a bottle of the swear OV every hour for two or three days. Alternatively, and preferably, you do a fast for two or three days. And when you start eating again, you eat one food at a time. And you eat just one component of that food. So if you, if you instead of a tuna fish salad sandwich, you just have tuna. Instead of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you just have peanuts. Instead of uh, uh, lasagna, you just have hamburger. You know, you just pick one component of the food and just see how your body responds. If you want a head start on it, almost everybody will respond to gluten and grains and flour. Many people will respond to eggs. Many people will respond to nuts. Uh, uh, and peanuts are separate, legumes also. So peanuts and nuts, cashews sometimes, almonds. Uh, and many people uh, will respond to soy. So, but it, you don't want to restrict it to that. That's just kind of a little head start on you, uh, for you. Now, if you're 77, you've probably done a tremendous number on your gut bacteria anyway, because most of us have. That's called dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria. DYS means messed up, and biosis refers to the gut bacteria. Why? Because we drink chlorinated water. We drink fluoridated water. We get antibiotics in our fish. We get antibiotics in our eggs and in our dairy. We get antibiotics everywhere. We take antibiotics. and and you've taken a couple big ones. So chances are pretty good your intestines really messed up at the bacterial level. Start fixing that up. Get on the nightly essence. Now this is after you've eliminated the foods, okay? Uh, I shouldn't say after, but you want to do them at the same time. Uh, you want to make sure you're using uh, the nightly essence, fermented foods. Sauerkraut is great because cabbage is particularly good for the intestine, by the way. Steamed cabbage. Cabbage contains something called vitamin U, which has been used to treat ulcers. Uh, but any any of the cruciferous vegetables or any vegetables that you could ferment, I should say. Uh, if you want to do your own fermenting, there's a great book called The Art of Fermentation that will help you. Real gut, uh, wonderful, easy recipes there. Vegetable juices are also important for the intestine. And I know I've said many of I, I, we we've talked about this before, but just oh, in the yeah, interest of reiteration, awesome. just in the interest of re, re, reiteration, get yourself a, uh, a Vitamix and do vegetable juices, aloe vera, noni juice. Jan, we'll finish up when we come back. we got to take okay. a commercial. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. Jan in Santa Cruz with the colitis. Are you really 77, Jan? I just, yes, I just thought yes, of that. Well, congratulations. You must Thank know you. a thing or two. You must well, know a I've thing or two. I've been taking quite a few supplements for a lot of years. Well, good deal. Good deal. So uh, what are you doing? Have I met you before in Santa Cruz? No, no. I'm... You know, that's my home away from home, Santa Cruz. Really? Like, I love Santa Cruz. Oh, uh, it's a great place. Great town. Have you been there a long time? Yes. Yes, over, You're... over 40 years. Over 40 years. Okay, good deal. All right, so uh, anyway, so colitis, you want to uh, do the uh, fast or swear of the cleanse, elimination diet, and then start to restore gut flora. I told you about sauerkraut and uh, fermented foods and, uh, and cabbage. And then before we went to break, I was telling you about vegetable juices. Very important for several reasons. Homemade vegetable juices uh, with the fiber. The fiber is very important for the intestine, keeps things clean. Um, the uh, bacteria live off of the fiber and they release healthy compounds out of the fiber. They actually eat the fiber and then in response to the food, the fiber food, they secrete healthy compounds, health giving compounds. Compounds, compounds that are important for your brain, compounds that are important for the digestive tract itself. So fiber from vegetable juices is very helpful. Fiber can also have a, a filling effect. And then there's also nitrogen in vegetables, and nitrogen is super duper important for the intestine. So lots of homemade vegetable juices, as well as aloe vera and noni juice, which contain the structured water that we were talking about earlier. And that structured water that you find in aloe vera and noni uh, will have a, a, a very healing and soothing 
building effect on the colon. In fact, you should be doing it every day. Everybody, really everybody should be doing it, uh, uh, aloe or anoni every day because of the structured water and the nutrients that are in the aloe and noni. And then last but not least, I would be getting some bone broth protein from brightsidehealth.com and making sure you're doing lots and lots of bone broth. You might also want to throw in some of the glucogel caps from Longevity as well as the ultimate enzymes. Jan, I'm going to let you go, but you got a ton of, a ton of information there. Yeah, uh, I ho- hope we helped you out. Happy holidays. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much, Ben. Okay. Take care, Jan. All right. Let's move on to my friend Elaine in Alaska. What's going on, Elaine? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good morning. What's cooking? Good. Yeah. Hey, I just have, um, I'm doing a courtesy call for another patient. I will probably call you every week. I have so no problem. I love it. I love it. You always have somebody um, interesting. Who, who do we have today? Uh, she is um, in her mid-30s. Her symptoms started um, on when she was 32. She has four children, and she's been diagnosed with calpanopathy. Calpanopathy. She, spell it for me. C-A-L-P-A-I-N. O P A T. Calpanopathy. Calpanopathy. It's it's yes. a rare form of um, muscular dystrophy. Here's the deal with calpanopathy. It, these are just names that doctors throw out because they're obsessed with classification. Don't pay any attention. Your diagnosis is irrelevant. It doesn't matter, except for the pathy part. The pathy part means disease. She's breaking down. Muscular, she has, she has multiple sclerosis, you said, or it's a form of multiple sclerosis, you said, right? Uh, uh, Calpanopathy. No. I haven't heard I haven't heard of calpanopathy, just so you know. But I have heard of of pathy, and I have heard of uh, of, uh, muscle weakness and muscular dystrophy. That's what muscular dystrophy is. Dystrophy means your muscles aren't doing their business. They're not growing. They're not feeding. They're not eating. They're not doing their what they're supposed to do. Muscular means muscles. Your muscles are breaking down. Doesn't matter what it's called. Okay, you just treat it the same way from a reversal perspective, from an insurance perspective, it matters from a specialist perspective. It matters from a protocol perspective. It matters because then the doctor can say, oh, you have he puts to, this is what he does. He puts together some symptoms and then he goes to the book and see what it what the symptoms all uh, when you what the syndrome is that contains all the various symptoms and then he names it. And then he goes back to another book and looks what how you treat the name. We get treated. We treat names here. Yeah, that's what medicine is. It's about treating names. It's about treating diagnoses. Not treating people, not treating symptoms, treating diagnosis. We and treat the name. Much, she's preparing herself to be in a wheelchair for the rest of well, her life. Well, she doesn't have to be. She doesn't have to be. Let me, it's, a, it's a degenerative disease, which means it gets worse. Whenever there's degeneration, by definition, you can have regeneration. All you got to do is figure out what's causing the degeneration. That's as simple as that, really. Now, nutritional deficiencies are going to be involved, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But always first, what do you check, Elaine? You know, I, I don't want to repeat myself because I feel silly if I keep saying it over and over again. So you tell me, what's the first thing you check on? Well, I would think she would need to start with the gut. Exactly. That alone will make a huge difference. Read Terry Wall's book, W-A-H-L's, or have her read it. Dr. Terry Walls is considered to be a medical genius because she figured out how to take care of her multiple sclerosis with, with diet. Okay, and she wrote a book on that, the Walls Protocol. It's just because it, I know some, some, maybe there's some listeners out there who think I'm just some crazy pharmacist guy on the radio. So read Dr. Walls' book. It's the same idea. She doesn't have, she doesn't have MS, MS, she has MD, but it's the same idea, muscular yep. dystrophy. So work with the gut first, okay? Guarantee you, Elaine, guarantee 100%, you can bet the house on it that she's going to know she's had a digestive health issue of some kind. You can right. bet the house on it, all right? She has it. If it's this severe, she's got to know it. All right. Sometimes they go under the radar. Not with her. She's going to tell you she's had uh, some kind of food to problem, gluten problem, constipation, something like that. You will just that alone will make a significant difference in her health. More significant than anything a medical professional can do for her. Just that alone, correcting a digestive health issue. You know the drill: elimination diet, uh, of fasting, and then elimination diet, and then food diary, and then replacing gut bacteria. I'm not going to repeat myself. It's it's all the stuff we always talk about. Next thing you want to do is because she's probably at this point starving to death. You understand? She's malnourished because she's not absorbing. So you got to pound her body with nutrients, particularly the electrical ones. All of them, but especially the B complex and the electrolytes and vitamin C. If it was me, I'd be doing IV vitamin C. But, you know, that she may not want to go that far beyond tangy tangerine. Have her drinking it all day long. Okay? 
Then get her on the Healthy Start Pack, which the BTT is part of, of course. Uh, nine of the EFAs a day, and then a couple of capfuls of the Osteomag. I would throw in the Ultimate Selenium and the Fucoid Z. Fucoid Z, of course, is a polysaccharide that has, helps thin the blood. If you've been listening to this program, now you know why the Fucoid Z is so important, because it helps improve the flow of the liquidy portion of the body, and also important for the connective tissue. And then all of her antioxidants, especially coenzyme Q10, which is uber, uber important for the muscles. Uber, with a U, extra, massively important for the muscles. The coenzyme Q10. And I haven't forgotten to talk about coenzyme Q10 because we're going to talk quite a bit about it here in the coming days. Uh, absolutely a must, coenzyme Q10. I'd be doing 200 milligrams a day. In fact, I would be doing ubiquinol rather than ubiquinone. I wouldn't be messing around. And we'll talk about the distinction between those two here uh, in, the, in the coming days. Either way, 200 milligrams a day of CoQ10, vitamin E, 400 international units a day, alpha lipoic acid. 400 milligrams a day, uh, N-acetylcysteine, 1,000 milligrams a day, all her fatty vitamins, uh, vitamin K, as well as D, make sure she's getting out in the sun. I'd be doing 20,000 IU of vitamin A. There's m so many more things. Bone broth protein, uh, as well as uh, chicken soup, homemade chicken soup. I, I want to take one more call, Elaine. I hope I helped you out. That's, that should Thank give you a ton you. of I'll, information. I'll do what I can to convince her, but the doctors just have her convinced her. Well, I can't help it. I can't do anything about that. That's, you know. All right. Thank you so much, Elaine. God bless. Have a beautiful day. All right, Brooke, uh, you get the last word here. Brooke in Tampa. Good morning. Hey, Ben. Happy holidays. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Happy holidays to you, my friend. What's going on in Tampa? Well, uh, Ben, about a couple, about a year or two ago, I started to get some uh, viral warts. I got a huge one on the back of my heel, and okay. then uh, they spread to my left hand. And of oh, course, gosh. you know, I went to the dermatologist, and they tried they can't to freeze do them off. And, it's not or, in the no, skin. No, they couldn't do anything. It's the immune system, Brooke. Your immune system yeah. is suppressed, and this is something that's, that's important what I because thought. it's putting you at risk for all kinds of horrible things. This is a warning shot. Okay, it's very important that you address it right now. This is a warning shot for you. And it could get much, much worse. So first and foremost, you got to stop if you're eating a lot of sweets or sugar or bread or pasta. That's very powerfully immune suppressant. So you got to. I know it's hard because we're that we're hardwired to eat these kinds of things, and they're all over the place. But it, for you, it's very important. This is a this is a major warning sign for you. Okay. Okay. So okay. So keep your intake of uh, anything that, that reduces your immune system or weakens your immune system. Uh, you should have zero tolerance, really, and that's especially the sweets. Replace them with protein. Protein. Uh, get the bone broth protein off brightsidehealth.com or use whey protein if you can. If you have problem foods, you got to eliminate those. Make sure you, you're using the nightly essence and fermented foods. If you have any issues with leaky gut or arthritis or autoimmunity or inflammation, those are also signs that you may have leaky gut. You really got to correct any digestive health issues. Uh, and then also get on the ultimate selenium, uh, 600 micrograms a day. I'd be using 50 milligrams a day of zinc to colonate, and I would also uh, make in addition to protein, I'd also be using a few, uh, a few amino acids, important amino acids, especially glutamine powder. I'm out of time, Brooke. There's so many more things. Vitamin C. Don't forget high doses of vitamin C every day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening oh, to yeah. The Bright Side, friends. I got to go, Brooke. I apologize. Send an email, ben at ksco.com, and I'll, uh, I'll put your phone number in there, and I'll call you. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.